I think the CCP and Russia cannot beat us kinetically. They cannot beat us economically. So they're weaponizing social media platforms to divide us from one another. And I think they're doing a really good job. And Americans are easier to fool than convinced we've been fooled. And I think there are bad actors, foreign actors, who've weaponized these platforms to, quite frankly, start getting us to hate each other. The easiest way to defeat Native Americans was to get them warring with each other and have them kill 30% of each other and then come in for a cleanup operation. And I think that's happening in the U.S. right now. If you go on TikTok, there's 52 pro-Hamas videos for every one pro-Israel video. And I'm not suggesting the CCP or the GRU are anti-Semitic. I'm suggesting they see an opportunity to polarize people internally in the U.S. and get us hating each other. No one can defeat us right now. We are, we are undefeatable from a, a military or an economic standpoint right now. The way to defeat us and deposition us strategically, internationally, is to get us hating each other. And I think they're doing a good job of it. That's the most convincing argument I've actually ever heard for why China played a role in TikTok and why also they don't care about owning it is because they set up an algorithm which is so unbelievably brutal. Um, we always, uh, from a, I come from a social media background where we worked in social media for 10, 15 years now. And the one defining thing about this, the TikTok algorithm is if you post something, regardless of how many followers you have, it'll either get a thousand views or seven million. It's the mm -hmm. only algorithm with such extreme variance. And what that tells you is that the algorithm is basically saying, okay, take that and show it to everybody. And actually that's not good to show it to nobody. Yeah. And because it's doing that, you can imagine the, the amount of sort of division where polarizing content on this side is going to everyone. Mm -hmm. Nuance goes to no one. Nuance, like unemotional nuance, nuance takes goes to no one. And then polarizing content on the left or the right also goes to everyone. So if I was actually thinking about it, if I was brainstorming in China and I wanted to tear the West apart, what I would do is I would introduce an app that has an extreme algorithm either way. And I wouldn't care about owning it. I wouldn't care about, they can run it. I'll give them all the, all the shares, just get it into their society. While over there in China, we control our algorithm. Well, we don't, and we don't allow foreign actors anywhere near. Yeah. Let, I'm going to list now every American media company in China. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> they just, there's just no way they're going to let us over there. And yet we have a neural jack implanted into the wet matter of our youth. It's more dominant than CBS, ABC, and NBC were in the 60s. So would we, allow, would we have allowed the Kremlin to own CBS, NBC, and ABC? That's what we're doing right now with TikTok. Kids spend more time on TikTok now under the age of 25 than they spend on all broadcast media uh, combined. This is also true of Meta. And the primary fuel for that algorithm, what the algorithm tries to suss out, the thing that used to be the ultimate gangster move in marketing used to be sex, sex sells. Show hot people playing volleyball and people will think, well, if I drink more beer, I too will be hot, right? If I have this car, I'm more likely to have a random sexual experience. I would really like to have more random sexual experiences, so I'll buy the new Chrysler Cordoba with original Corinthian leather, right? It used to be sex sells. Basically, Meta figured out there's something better than sex, rage. So if you have a long, hour-long conversation with a epidemiologist that says, yeah, we rolled out the polio vaccine too quickly in the 50s and 60s and a bunch of people died, but generally speaking, vaccines uh, are probably, have pro probably prevented more unnecessary death than anything. In I mean, a long, thoughtful conversation that's data-driven the algorithms hate that shit. But if you're RFK Jr. and you're on a podcast and he leans in and he says, Stephen, the best thing you can do when you see someone with a baby is to say to them, don't get her vaccinated. Like he, he's this handsome, charming guy and he looks at you and says, that's the best thing you can tell a new mother. Oh my God, the algorithms love that. Because the people who have been worried about vaccines and, have, and, and believe that conspiracy love it. And people like me get fucking outraged and shitpost him, more comments, algorithm, oh my God, more comments, more interaction, more Nissan ads, more shareholder value. So let's take the most incendiary shit and give it way more reach than it would get organically. So it's happening naturally, even among US companies. But then if I wrap it in cute dance videos, and I can put my thumb on content that's really incendiary, whether it's a conflict in the Middle East or income inequality or the lack of opportunity. I mean, just a lot of my content around how young people are not doing well has gone viral on TikTok. And I'm kind of playing into the algorithm. Oh, this guy's saying young people should be angry. We like that, thumb on the scale. 
I just think it's so ridiculous that we don't think we're being played. What would we do in the West? If we had an opportunity to dial up anti-Islamic Republic content in a social media platform in Iran, you don't think we'd game that shit? We have a division of the army called PSYOPs. That's all they do is try and spread our media content that's very pro-American and anti our adversaries across different mediums across the world. The problem is we're not used to them doing it to us. And it's so genius. Meta involved, I'm, uh, I finally got, after seven years, I finally got an original scripted series on big tech greenlighted, and it's gonna be on Netflix. And I'm really enjoying putting together certain scenes and scenarios. And a scenario I believe has happened over and over is that Zuckerberg goes in front of Congress and gets pilloried. No concern for young people skyrocketing teen suicide. They get their TikTok moment. Then he goes into a confidential security hearing and he says, guys, do you want me to continue to help you kill terrorists? Meta is the ultimate espionage vehicle. The Mossad, the CIA, the GRU would kill to have control Meta. I can tell someone's relationships, their vulnerabilities, where they are. I can GPS locate it. I bet he says, do you want me to continue to help you kill terrorists? And they say, yeah. And then he's like, then back the fuck off. And what do you know? There's never been a law passed regulating social media. I think that is what is happening after these Congress people get their TikTok moment. We're writing a scene right now where I believe that a lot of the drone strikes against terrorists in Yemen and other places have been aided by social media platforms tracking people down. Your 14 year old has their phone out and they're on Instagram and their dad or their uncle at the wedding of bad people doesn't know this kid's on their phone. They've all been told. I mean, everyone is on these platforms. So I think we're doing it. And the CCP would be stupid not to be dialing up content that makes us angry at each other such that we're not focused on whether China invades Taiwan or not. They have a, they'd be stupid not to be doing this. If you love the Diver CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.